Hey guys, in this video we're going to talk about uh, Android. So if you're a UI UX designer and uh, looking to build your first project in Android or maybe you already done uh, a few and want to learn some more advanced concepts, this video is uh, definitely for you because we're going to go through some uh, of the basics of Android design and uh, also some of the advanced concepts. Uh, so uh, without further ado, let's jump into the video. Okay, let's start talking about uh, Android design. So the very first thing that um, I want to communicate is that uh, on Android, your design must work on a lot of different devices because uh, Android apps uh, can uh, be on uh, watches, on uh, mobile phones, uh, on tablets, uh, even cars uh, and uh, on uh, the TV. So these are things which uh, you have to take in consideration before the project, if uh, that specific project is going to entail some of uh, these uh, different mediums. Now, of course, it really depends on the project. So uh, it's a case by case solution, but uh, Android can be very flexible. So this is one of the things which uh, you want to consider when uh, working on uh, Android. Now, not only do Android devices come in different screen sizes, handsets, uh, tablets, uh, TVs, uh, and so on, uh, um, but uh, their screens uh, also have different pixel sizes. So this is something which uh, is uh, uh, quite important to understand because that is, while one device uh, has uh, 160 pixels per square inch, uh, another device might fit uh, 480 pixels in the same space. So this difference between uh, uh, devices uh, can um, really be important to consider because there's so many Android devices out there and uh, um, spe especially at the, at the start, you know, there was uh, uh, a lot going out. So this is definitely something which uh, you want uh, to consider. Now, if you don't consider these variations in pixel density, the system might scale your images, resulting in blurry images, or the images might appear at a completely wrong size. Now, um, we're going to talk about uh, also how to optimize images and uh, assets such as uh, icons and um, things of that nature a little bit later on in this video, but um, just keep these things uh, in mind for now. Now, ideally, you should provide uh, multiple versions of uh, each bitmap uh, in uh, your app. Uh, however, one of my best recommendations is to use uh, scalable vector graphics whenever possible. So as you can see here, uh, we have uh, different uh, sort of clusters of uh, um, images which uh, you, you can use uh, in uh, different uh, scenarios. So basically Android is going to be responsive in uh, that uh, aspect. So uh, definitely keep this uh, in mind. And uh, one of my suggestions is uh, if you're working on an Android app, uh, which uh, is going to entail a lot of uh, different uh, screen sizes and, uh, and devices, is to always start with uh, the small screens in mind because uh, if you start with a small screen, it's uh, still usable on uh, a tablet screen, for example, but uh, a tablet UI on a phone would be tricky to use uh, if not adapted accordingly. So essentially, it's uh, the concept of uh, mobile first uh, and uh, really sorting out what are the most important uh, elements uh, from uh, the smaller screens because after that uh, adapting to bigger screens and um, you know you can also have flexibility and add more functionality or, or just more more detail in the uh, experience with the bigger screens it just becomes uh, easier to do so so this is definitely something to consider now there's also this concept of density buckets and um, to deal with different uh, screens uh, Google gives you the following density buckets. So there is the LDPI, which is uh, the low, which is essentially 120 DPI's. Then there's the medium, which is 160 DPI's. Then there's the high, which is 240 DPI's. The extra high, 320. Extra, extra high, 480 DPI's. And extra, extra, extra high, which is 640 DPI's. So these are sort of clusters which um, um, the developer are going to use uh, 
for uh, um, creating and uh, basically keep everything uh, in a responsive uh, um, sense. So it's a very similar concept to um, what you see in the web development when it comes to the breakpoints from uh, you know mobile, tablet, and desktop. And uh, especially if you were previously um, worked with uh, a framework like uh, Bootstrap, you're definitely going to be familiar with the concept. Now, as you mentioned earlier, the ideal, um, my, my best suggestion is to always use scalable vector graphics. Uh, so use SVGs whenever possible and um, use PNGs uh, because, because using PNGs can get intense real fast when working on Android projects because you essentially have to deliver um, a lot of different assets. And although this is uh, way easier than uh, uh, nowadays compared to the Photoshop days where you had to resize an asset uh, different times, uh, um, like nowadays with uh, softwares like Figma, Sketch and Adobe XD, this is uh, way easier than what it used to be because you simply select the different uh, um, the different values and you can uh, bulk export faster. Still using SVGs uh, is going to be a, um, it's just a really good practice in order to keep the assets uh, pixel perfect at uh, any size because it's uh, a scalable vector graphic and uh, I myself, I always use them for icons and uh, you know, uh, w w whenever I can, I always use SVG. So it's uh, really, really recommended. Now, when it comes to the layout, uh, all the UI elements in Android take up a rectangular space uh, equal to the minimum rectangular needed to enclose the object. And uh, these are called the content bounds. So, very similar concept to uh, web design, web development, and uh, essentially similar to web development, you can also use padding and margin for adding space. So, the same concept. Uh, Applies essentially so the padding uh, is uh, essentially the uh, the inner space between uh, the element and the content bound and the margin is uh, just the um, uh, the space between uh, two or more elements so yeah it's uh, very similar to web development uh, as a concept and uh, there are four core layout managers um, which are the frame layout linear layout, relative layout, and the grid layout. And um, there, there's more, but for this specific video, I don't want to go too much into the details of this because uh, um, I think it, it deserves a, uh, another video dedicated just to, just to this, uh, showing examples and stuff. So if you're interested in uh, learning more about this, uh, um, I'm not going to make another video. Uh, about it, which I think I, I am going to do so in the future. In the meantime, you can check this link or you know just make it easier on yourself and just Google Android layout and uh, you're going to find it right away. Now, when it comes to UX patterns, uh, um, this is something which is uh, very important to consider. You never want to reinvent, to reinvent the wheel in the UI UX and you always want to keep things uh, straightforward and uh, enable the user to um, browse through the, the application and navigate in a very easy and straightforward way with uh, UX patterns with, um, that he's familiar with. So the very first advice is to get an Android device uh, if you haven't ready and just you know, start using it. Um, and uh, you know, get get the feeling for it. Uh, it's uh, definitely something which uh, um, it's uh, going to, to really really help because you're going to be a user of the actual uh, platform. So um, highly suggested. And then the second uh, thing is uh, download uh, Android UI kits and also download uh, um, Android apps and. Uh, just uh, start playing with them. But um, the UI kits, uh, there's uh, some of them which are really, really good. At this time, there is the Android uh, Nougat, which is uh, a free download from uh, Great Simple Studio. Um, it's a great UI kit. I highly recommend you to uh, to download it because, well, first of all, it, it's free and uh, it contains uh, a lot of the UX patterns which uh, 
you can find in Android and um, it's definitely something which uh, can help you out to bootstrap projects and uh, really learn more about the uh, Android UX uh, in general. And uh, there's also another one which uh, this is a premium one, but there's also many other ones which uh, um, are also for free and uh, other premium ones on the website uia.net and uh, I'm going to leave uh, the link in the description below so feel free to check it out it's a uh, great great resource for material design and uh, uh, Android design uh, kits so definitely check it out um, I'm going to leave the link in the description and uh, now let's talk about uh, fonts so and also icons now, when it comes to fonts, uh, um, I usually use uh, Google Web Fonts in 99.9% of the cases nowadays. And um, some of the flagship uh, fonts uh, when it comes to Android uh, are the fonts uh, named Roboto and uh, Droid. You're going to, to find those a lot. And um, they're really good fonts, very stable at uh, different uh, sizes. and. Uh, yeah, they're pretty cool. And um, another, um, and when it comes to icons, uh, one of the flagship is the Google Material icons, uh, very very known. And um, if you go, if you go on uh, this uh, link, uh, which is material.io/resources/icons, you're going to be able to find uh, and also download uh, the all of the uh, Google Material icons in SVG format. So that's uh, uh, all for free. And uh, yeah, you can, uh, uh, I would highly suggest you to check out these icons. And uh, when it comes to the Google fonts, uh, you can go on fonts.google.com and um, you're going to be able to see all of the Google fonts. And uh, again, you can download them for free. And uh, there's a lot of uh, great, great fonts and uh, resources. So uh, I would highly recommend you to check that out. Now, for this video is it uh, this is it for this video and um, again guys this is just uh, a start so I encourage you to go and learn some more and uh, especially experiment with the Android world so um, get an, an Android phone if you haven't already download these UI kits start working on a project and uh, start w working on your first uh, apps uh, and uh, really experiment with, uh, with this whole thing so this is it for this video i hope you enjoyed it if you liked it please leave a thumbs up and uh, if you have any questions feel free to leave a comment uh, i always try to reply as fast as i can to the comments so um, definitely let me know uh, your your feelings and uh, especially if you're interested in uh, more ui ux design content uh, um, on my channel, I have over 200 videos and uh, they talk about uh, software tutorials as well as uh, uh, master classes like uh, this one. And I also talk about the uh, business side of uh, freelancing because I myself, uh, I'm a UI UX designer with uh, uh, over eight years of experience and I've been working remotely for um, over the past uh, four years and uh, with clients from all around the world. So. In my YouTube channel, I essentially um, share my knowledge and uh, yeah, so feel free to subscribe and uh, check it out. So this is it for this video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.